About a week ago, I put up a poll on the channel and I asked you guys that if you were gonna be selling your house soon or if you have it for sale right now, what your stance is on paying the buyer's agent commission from now on, now that we've seen the NAR settlement and the rules are changing. First of all, I gotta say, just by looking at the poll results, it's pretty amazing that it's an even 25-75 split, where 75% of you say that uh, you will not be paying the buyer's agent, they can pay their own agent, but still 25% of you out there said that you will pay. And, you know, I kind of already heard a lot of the reasons why people say they don't wanna pay, so I wanna focus more on the people who actually said that they would still pay because that's this whole argument, right? People don't want to pay the buyer's agent commission and that's what this whole lawsuit was over to begin with. I'm gonna read through a lot of your comments and this is kind of what led to this feeling, I think, to begin with and kind of led people to file this lawsuit is because of people like this, okay? Hiring a licensed realtor was the dumbest decision of my life. Nothing but lies and dishonesty and deception at every corner. I will never use a licensed realtor again as long as I live. The most unprofessional group of professionals I have ever contacted. Obviously not all real estate agents are like this, but you always get a few bad apples that give the whole crowd a bad name. And uh, it's no different with real estate. I've personally been burned by real estate agents, even working as another real estate agent. You know, people, you know, lying and cheating and trying to steal your clients, all sorts of things that they do that are not right. And so I can see why, if you have a bad experience with somebody like this, that you would feel this way. This person brings up something interesting. As a buyer, it might be a good idea to become a real estate agent and pay myself. Well, funny enough, a lot of people did that for a long time and it made sense when you know you could get a commission from the sale, especially if you're an investor and you buy a lot of real estate and you wanna work your own deals, then you could always pick up the buyer's agent commission in those deals and save some money, right? But now that buyer's agent's commissions are changing or possibly going away, we don't know exactly what this is gonna look like when July comes around, then people aren't gonna have the incentive to do this anymore. Like why get your real estate license as an investor or somebody if a lot of properties are not even offering a buyer's agent commission anymore? It kind of defeats the purpose. Obviously that would still work only if you find a property that's offering a buyer's agent commission still. But I think even after the new MLS rules go into effect, I still think you're gonna see a lot of sellers offer some sort of compensation to buyers realtors and I have some of you in here in the comments that give some pretty good reasons for doing so. And here's one of the first examples right here. This person goes, we just listed our house yesterday. It's empty, we have no mortgage and already relocated a few miles away. Our realtor offered to go with 3% for him and 0% for the buyer's agent. He would process the sale as usual for the buyer if he received a call from MLS postings. I lit up with joy, however, my husband, who is so cheap, he would cut off his own feet to save money on socks, he declined and opted to pay a 5% to be split evenly in hopes of a quicker sale. I had done research and found that homes of our size and price range move very quickly due to low inventory. So that's already the first person saying that would normally be very cheap and want to cut out the commission entirely actually offered to pay the buyer's agent in order for a quicker sale. And I feel like that's where a lot of people are gonna be at with this for now, because you know if you have one house offering a buyer's agent commission and the one right next door isn't, you know, which one's gonna get more showings? That's pretty obvious at this point. You know, offering a commission to a buyer's realtor might even garner that property, you know, double or triple the attention of a property that's not offering that. And if you're in an area that has a lot of inventory, that can be very important. And even made me just think of something because if the status quo moving forward is that the buyer is supposed to pay their own agent, but if the seller's still offering a buyer's agent commission, does that mean they get both? Uh, are the buyers going to make double the commission on those type of deals? Yet another unanswered question of how all this is gonna look. Because the seller isn't gonna know if the buyer's already paying them or not. After all, that realtor works for the buyer, not the seller. So none of that's really none of their business. It's gonna be lots of shakeups from this, guys.
Now this person brought up a good way to probably do it yourself if you wanted to. They go, do a realistic house price comparison, then put FSBO sign out two weeks prior to open house. Put the website address on sign, which shows tons of pics and description on the website. I would create a website builder for 20 or 30 bucks. Put being sold strictly as is, no commissions, paid by seller, no warranties or guarantees um, implied, another legal mumbo jumbo. Put date, time of open house, have friend walk people through home, doesn't answer any questions as doesn't know anything. Tells them being sold as is, what you see is what you get. Have people put in the offer. If house priced correctly, you will get offers. Pick the best one, give best offer to my attorney, and then done. I have sold many houses this way and I made hundreds of thousands on sale and pay zero commissions. Best of luck to all home buyers and sellers. Don't be greedy or selfish and it will work out. Now this is actually pretty good advice if you want to go it alone as a home seller. But the key to this advice working is the very last part of what this guy said is that don't be greedy or selfish. Meaning that, you know, one problem I see with a lot of people, uh, a lot of sellers, is they think that their house is always worth more than their neighbor's house, okay? And they list the house way too high. It happens with they have a real estate agent or not, and they just are unrealistic about the price. And if you're trying to go it alone, and you're sitting on the market, that listing might as well be dead. People look at Zillow as a way to value their property, but that's not really a very accurate way to value real estate, honestly. And they're always gonna value it higher than it probably should be. So unless you live in an area where the inventory is very low still, and you're one of the only listings that comes up and you get a ton of interest, you might be sitting on the market if you're not pricing the property appropriately, which is just a mistake I've seen over and over again from so many different sellers, guys. But it's also very optimistic to believe that you'll be able to sell the house from just doing one open house. I think that's the biggest hole in this guy's logic here is like, okay, I'm gonna do an open house and do a little marketing ahead of time and then boom, I'm gonna sell the house. It's not really that simple, guys. In fact, I've done probably, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of open houses as a real estate agent guess what never sold any of those houses from an open house not even once so to sit there and say that you're going to be able to just sell a house from doing an open house one time that's going to get you there that's pretty optimistic thinking guys so this is this guy must have been very lucky and it probably lives in a very hot market this person goes we have an inherited property for sale in florida right now and yes we offered the traditional commission too I also know somebody personally that has a place for sale that is still offering the traditional commission also and this whole decision hasn't affected their logic and they're still willing to pay the full price actually and um, apparently 25% of you feel that same way. This person goes, I'm not selling for now but when I do, I will offer to pay at least some of the commission to help the buyer. It also helps me in the end too. Better to give up 1.5% of sale price to ensure houses sold quickly. If not sold quickly, then reduce the percentage accordingly. So once again, they see the value in offering the buyer's agent commission in getting the house sold quickly. They don't want to be the only house in the neighborhood not offering it, right? So I think there's still going to be a lot of pressure on sellers to offer a buyer's agent commission just due to this one thing alone, you know? You're not very competitive on the market, if all of your neighbors are offering a commission and you're the one who isn't, unless your price is significantly lower, which attracts more attention. This person goes, I thought about selling my home, but probably won't due to having to pay taxes. If I decide to sell, I would list it on Facebook like the realtors in my area are doing. My neighbor sold his home last month by putting a sign in the yard. So I think because we had such an extremely hot market for a long time, a lot of sellers are under this impression that all you have to do is put a sign in the yard and put up a Facebook post and the house will sell. And when you're in a really hot market, that's true. But once inventory returns back to normal levels, that no longer is the case. And people like that are probably going to be dumbfounded when they try that and it just doesn't work. The only way that will continue to work in the future is if they price the property appropriately, which is the number one mistake that most sellers don't do. So guys, I have no problem with people going it alone. I don't care what you do. I'm just telling you that if you're gonna go it alone, you better make sure your price is appropriate. In fact, you may even wanna underprice it to garner more attention, you know? If all your neighbors are asking 400,000, put yours up for 385. 
that's not a huge hit to take. And because you're gonna offer a better deal, you might garner more attention and maybe even multiple offers and you could end up getting more than your neighbors. You know, that's a tactic that real estate agents have used for a long time. This person goes, realtors will steer their clients toward sellers and home builders that offer better compensation to the buyer and the contracted agent. Agents will still find a way to make the home buying and selling process lucrative for both parties. And I 100% agree with this. Um, in fact, new construction always offers the best deals, guys. I've even seen uh, new construction builders offer as much as seven or eight percent just to the buyer's agent for bringing them a deal. And that is way more lucrative than selling you know, an existing home because no home seller is ever offering that much. This person goes, I would offer 2% to the buyer as a generic seller concession to be used to pay for closing costs or agent fees. Essentially, agents would be less likely to steer clients away and buyers without agents getting their closing costs paid for. I could see that as kind of a middle of the road tactic. I understand where this person's logic is coming from because you're still offering something which is better than nothing. And it's funny because they said 2%. Well, kind of like the standard that most people were offering for the longest time was 3%. So it's really not that far off and you're not gonna be saving a whole lot of money like this. This one goes, I will offer less money to the seller in order to pay my buyer's agent or my offer will include money at closing for my agent. This legal decision is bull crap. So that's the other thing too. If it turns the other way where a lot of sellers aren't offering compensation and buyers have to pay their own agent, then of course buyers are gonna be offering less in order to you know, make up for that difference that they have to pay their realtor. This person said something interesting. Buyers will go to builders instead of buying existing homes if sellers don't help with agent costs. That's what I'm doing. So somebody's actually doing this. And like I said, uh, home builders have been offering great incentives for a long time, both to real estate agents and to home buyers with the concessions and the commissions. It's pretty hard to beat as an existing seller. I think this is gonna open up a big opportunity for home builders because since they could traditionally offer you know, a much bigger commission and more incentives, you're gonna see more and more buyers and agents flock to those deals over people that don't wanna pay anything or give any concessions to the buyers. You know, so this is gonna hurt people that are not willing to pay to play essentially. This person says, we don't use listing agents. We simply pay a flat fee to list on the MLS, 500 bucks and offer a two and a half percent commission to buyers agents. The new ruling probably won't change that. We will gladly continue to offer two and a half percent commission to a realtor who brings us a qualified buyer and a winning offer. The problem is that if there's an identical offer from someone without an agent, the buyer with an agent will need to offer at least two and a half percent more to be competitive. So I was actually waiting to see a comment like this and I really didn't see hardly any of them actually. And this business model has been around for a long time. This is nothing new where you can pay somebody $500 to put the property on the MLS and then the big part of the commission you pay is to the buyer's agent. And this actually reinforces the idea that some people mentioned here, the most valuable uh, agent in the transaction has always been the buyer's agent because they're the ones bringing you the buyer for your house in many cases, not the listing agent. And that's exactly who the seller is trying to cut off. So it just goes to show you how little people actually understand this ruling and how it's gonna affect people in general. And this is just yet another case of why I think a lot of sellers are still gonna be willing to pony up the dough at the end of the day because they want buyers coming to their house. And you can always just pay one of these uh, MLS brokerages where they just put your listing on the MLS for 500 bucks. That's been around for at least 10, 12 years, guys. So this is nothing new. This person goes, I've only paid 6% once, 5% twice, four twice, and four and a half once. You have to negotiate. There is no law on commission amount. It's negotiable. If the realtor won't negotiate, find another one who will. This has always been the case, which is why this lawsuit was bogus to begin with. And these commission amounts have always been negotiable, guys. Just like this guy said, like he's paid all these different amounts before this settlement even happened. So how did that happen? Through negotiating. This person says, anyone who thinks that this will bring down the cost is not informed. The seller will pocket the difference. Good luck to buyers with no representation. My wife is working a buyer side deal for at least two weeks and has uncovered things a buyer would never have known. And I totally agree with this also. 
and it has been my opinion as well that this is not going to make housing any more affordable okay like the media is claiming you know no seller is going to willingly lower the price of their home now that they don't have to pay the extra commission i don't think in many cases sellers will do this also if you're working with a busy home buyer you know that has kids and a busy life things going on and they try to go it alone they're going to miss a lot of stuff along the way could end up losing a deposit could miss something important with an inspection report they might miss something when it comes to the seller's disclosure because they're not really paying attention you know they're just expecting the realtor to do it for them most of the time and people that try to go it alone you know might run into trouble with this this guy goes i dropped three and a half percent right now to sell it i'm not sure if he means that he'd pay three and a half percent commission or if he means he'd drop his price by three and a half percent but if it's the the latter then good for you johnny appleseed because uh, we need more sellers like you for your listing agreement offer to pay a buyer's agent commission at full price anything else only selling agent commission so you're only going to be offering a buyer's agent commission if the buyer pulls the trigger and paid full price so flipping that around on you when you become a buyer after you sell that property are you going to pay full price for your next house exactly nobody ever does right people negotiate right people want to get a deal i've never seen anybody pay full price for a house under normal circumstances you know when you're talking about real estate everybody's trying to negotiate this negotiate that and except for the pandemic when people were doing crazy things and going over asking price and paying full price that's just not the norm and also i think it just continues to incentivize bad behavior on behalf of the buyer's agent because you're trying to push the buyer then to offer full price so they can get paid you know isn't that what we're trying to get away from here now this next one shows just how much people don't really know about the mls system they go i believe someone should open the mls system to the public for a fee the buyer or seller could then do most of the legwork themselves and if needed hire a real estate agent per hour to help with the deal if needed the way things have been normally set up it doesn't encourage the realtors to negotiate a much lower price because it affects their commission the buyer and seller need more control over what's being paid out to close the deal it's not rocket science and worth the time for one to figure out things with a little help now first of all like i said people don't know anything about the mls because there is no one mls okay there's like 600 mls databases throughout the entire country that are all segregated guys even me for example even though i'm a licensed florida real estate agent i can't just go log into the mls up in massachusetts and see what's going on up there okay i would need to be a member of the mls there in order to check that out so there is no one big mls system for buyers or sellers to have access to even real estate agents don't have access to one big mls system it's all regional by the way and a lot of people say okay we'll just turn to zillow or redfin or one of these other websites and what they don't realize that those websites get all their information from the mls because the mls associations have agreed to share that info with websites like zillow and redfin and all of this that's how they're able to get those listings guys if those agreements went away those those websites would have no listings on them except for sale by owner properties that's it and by the way when it comes to negotiating a lower price and being worried about the commissions and all of that that was never my experience as a real estate agent because think about this guys if you're selling a house for 400,000 and you know your buyer has a chance to get it for 350 that's not going to knock a whole lot off of your commission yeah you'll make a little bit less money but it's not life-changing money you know worth being greedy over at least it never was for me and i would always rather have a happy client that's going to return and put more money in my pocket in the future then worry about an extra 500 bucks today because that's really all it kind of amounts to in a lot of cases you know is 500 bucks going to change your life because it's not changing mine this person says to be honest I don't know what's best when it comes to realtor compensation. I don't have a warm, fuzzy feeling about entering into a contract with an agent when buying, not knowing his or her work ethics. When buying, my wife and I have already scouted the area and available real estate sites and narrowed down our choice to five houses that we are interested in. 
maybe dealing with the seller's agent directly might be the best course of action only if we have done our due diligence and have a good understanding of the local market. So I think people like this will have an easier time going it on their own if you're willing to put in a lot more of the legwork yourself and you're not that busy. Also, if you've bought and sold a couple of properties before and have kind of, and know the ropes and you have the spare time, those people might be good candidates for this. But for the busy young couple that just had a baby and has another one on the way and they're both working full-time jobs, they're not gonna have time to do all this stuff and they're gonna need an agent. So, you know, you're gonna have this situation where some people are just gonna need an agent still and some people won't. This one goes, my preference would be to pay a buyer's agent by the hour at a pre-negotiated rate, just like attorneys. And when I first made a video about this, I actually said in that video that I think this is actually the most fair way moving forward. And it's better to even get rid of uh, buyer's agent commissions altogether and go towards this model because it's the most fair model, first of all, because people are gonna get rewarded based on the amount of time they put in. You know, with commissions, you get paid the same amount whether the deal took six months or it took six days, okay? So that's unfair for the realtors as well. There's also no incentive for a realtor to show you one house over the other under this model because you're getting paid by the hour, so you're not going to care how much the commission is because there is none. This goes back to the new construction example. If we keep the commission model for buyer's agents, then they're gonna be way more you know, willing to show people new construction properties or sellers that are still willing to pay the highest commission amount versus people that aren't paying anything, right? But if we eliminate commissions altogether and just pay them by the hour at a pre-negotiated rate, like this person says, that's the most fair way to do it. I think. Also then the more you work as a real estate agent, the more you're gonna get paid. And if you have a lot of easy deals, you're not gonna get paid as much. It's a fair compensation model. That's how pretty much everybody gets paid, you know, at a regular job. This person goes, I voted no as a seller. I'm keeping what's mine. If the buyer can't afford to pay fees, means they can't afford buying a house. Were any of the buyers or realtors paying my property taxes and insurance? They never add to those what the cost the seller had over the years. They just factor in the previous selling price. Good luck getting money from me. Big scam, all right. So one thing that a lot of people need to understand, especially home sellers, is that buyers already really can't afford to buy homes, okay? 2023 was the slowest year of real estate sales that we've seen since the 1990s, guys. So basically, a 30-year low in real estate sales because people aren't buying. And the people that are buying are very well off financially right now and are buying higher priced homes, which is making it look like the market is fantastic when it isn't. So the reality is most people already can't afford to buy. And if they have to pay additional money to a real estate agent, that's just gonna eliminate even more buyers from the market meaning there's less people out there looking to buy your house. If any buyer cannot pay for agent representation, they need to save more money and be patient until the day they can. They will be much better served becoming financially responsible. Once again, I understand what they're trying to say here because obviously if you can afford to pay someone versus someone who can't, means you're probably doing better financially and you're savvy with your money because you actually have that money to spare. But most home buyers, they don't put any more than 10% down, guys. And for first time home buyers, it's even less, more close to the 5% range. And um, that's already a very thin margin when it comes to buying a house. If they have to fork over extra, it's gonna significantly impact how much they can pay you for your house. So one way or another, you're gonna pay. You're either gonna pay a realtor and their commission to bring you the buyer, or you're gonna pay in the sense that you're gonna be lowering the price of your home to compensate for a buyer who cannot afford the price you're asking because they have to pay their agent. I mean, it's common sense, guys. And this is one of the reasons I also think that the mortgage industry might come to the rescue here with this and start offering to roll the commissions into their mortgage for buyers. I can just see that coming, you know, 10 miles away right now, even though this is not in the works yet, but just remember, you heard it from me. This person goes, I will do what my longtime realtor friends recommend. Man, that is trust right there. That is somebody who actually has somebody they know as a real estate agent with integrity that they can rely on. I feel like that's how a lot of my clients viewed me when I was working as an agent. And I'm always grateful for those type of people that can see the value that you brought to the table all along. Someone asked, can you have the same agent represent buyer and seller? In a lot of states you can, that's called the transaction broker. In some states you can't, some states that's completely illegal and you have to have 
two different agents on each side of the transaction. So I'm not sure how they're gonna be handling that in those states. But I do think real estate agents were to blame for part of the run up in this housing market because this person goes, uh, no, how about we start to move towards the FSBO model? The third party involvement drove up the prices since the start of the post GFC recovery. I would say that a lot of the competition from the buyers probably came from the real estate agents kind of encouraging them to, you know, make an overpriced offer or waive an inspection or waive a financing contingency in order to win the bid because number one, their commission's on the line and I think most people probably wouldn't do something like that without somebody whispering in their ear. So I do think real estate agents are responsible for a part of this run up, but obviously not the whole thing, guys. You have to look at the fact that we have, you know, a tremendous amount of inflation with combined with low interest rates, lots of free money really helped this market explode. It would have exploded either way, but maybe it wouldn't have gone to those extremes and people wouldn't have been so euphoric and stupid when it comes to home purchasing. This one says, I would definitely offer some compensation to the buyer's broker. It would not be 3% though. And for all the sellers out there that think they won't be offering any compensation or going to think twice about that decision when no buyers want to see their home because these buyers can't afford to pay their agent. Most first time buyers, VA and FHA buyers will not be able to pay their agent. So they'd be forced only to view homes where the seller is offering compensation to the buyer broker, which a lot of serious sellers will still be doing. But again, it won't be the full 3% that's been the norm. So this guy gets it. He understands that a lot of people are broke, you know, and are barely hanging on and can't barely afford the houses they're buying as it is. And then if they have to pay more money, that's gonna push them out of the market unless the seller offers to foot the bill. And finally, this guy goes, I can 100% assure you I'm not paying a realtor anything out of my pocket as a buyer. Buying and owning a home is not the investment it used to be. It's nothing but a giant money sucking liability at this point, no thanks. We make well into the six figures with little debt. Still, I'd much rather rent in this market. It's been a deliberate choice to not buy for several years now. Smart dude, whoever said that, good for you, man. You get it too. Now is definitely not the time to be jumping into these extremely overpriced housing market. And of course, there was many more guys. I even had more on my list here to read, but obviously this video is just getting too long, so I cannot go into more of them. But overall, I think people brought up a lot of fair points in this discussion. And what it all leads to, to me, what it sounds like is that in the end, the sellers are going to end up paying somebody somehow. You're going to be lowering the price of your house to compensate for not paying the realtor in order to attract more buyers, or you're just going to be paying the buyer's agent commission. So we're right back to square one with all this stuff. Like we're just running in circles over nothing. You know, people just like to sue. People felt ripped off probably because back at the beginning of this video, they probably worked with a couple of bad agents that make everybody look bad, you know, and that can really put a bad taste in someone's mouth and push them to the point where, hey, we're just gonna sue because we feel ripped off. But I honestly hope as a former real estate agent, somebody that was working full time in the business, that this does move in the direction of agents just getting paid for the work that they do, you know, like just pay me by the hour, a fair rate. And I think a lot of people would be happy with that because now you don't have this worry about if you're gonna get that commission anymore. I know I certainly would have liked a model like that when I was doing it because chasing the commission is you know, not really any fun, guys. It's fun when you get that big payout when it actually works out, but there's a lot more times when it doesn't work out than when it does, and those times never feel good. But of course, we'll keep an eye on this and see what actually happens once the new rules go into effect in July and see what people are actually doing and what some real world experiences are like then. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't wanna wait for my next video to come out, check out this one on the screen right over here, and I'll see you in the next one.